Can you name this artist? Look like I'm going for a swim. Dunk on him now, swinging off the rim. Sounds like Jay Z covering Nicki Minaj's Chun Li, right? Or is Nicki Minaj just Jay Z sped up? This conspiracy has been floating around for years, and it's hilarious. Yes, I'm King Kong. This is King Kong? Yes, Miss King Kong. What you're actually hearing is the effect of pitch shifting, the result of warping notes, voices, and other sounds to make them sound much lower or higher than normal. It's a common tool found in guitar solos and hip-hop samples, even cartoons. But how does it work, and why do people use it? We're here with Diana from Physics Girl. <laughs> My head is not... <laughs> we were talking earlier about what musicians think of pitches as, and it's basically like a high note is a high pitch, low note is a low pitch. So in science, we talk about those notes, those low and high notes as frequencies. So check this out. If I sort of slide up, I'm not a great whistler, but if I sort of slide up the scale, like from low pitch to high pitch, What did you notice? Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, they got closer together. Mm -hmm. So like you're seeing the wavelength, which is related to what we call frequency, but it's like shorter wavelength means higher frequency. It just happens more often. Is that what's happening when we're pitch shifting? We're just taking that and scrunching the, the wavelength? Yes, you would be just taking your waveform and, and like squeezing it, making those peaks closer together. Yeah. Or further apart if you pitch shift down. Before you hear our original song, let's talk about how other artists have used pitch shifting in their music. Hey, yo, I've been on. You've been calm. When we made Nicki Minaj sound like Jay-Z, we slowed down the song to 130%, which stretched out the waves to lower the pitch. Many artists have used speed altering techniques to manipulate pitch in their songs, but the band that really pioneered this style is one I'm sure you know. Where is the moment we needed the most? Songwriter Ross Bagdasarian was experimenting with a tape recorder in the late 1950s and discovered a sound that would define his career. He used this technique to create a duet with himself in his hit song Witch Doctor from 1958. <laughs> then one day while driving in Yosemite National Park, a chipmunk dashed in front of his car and well, it all clicked. He recorded the vocals for Alvin and the Chipmunks at half the normal speed and play the tape back at full speed to create the effect. Here's how they sound when you slow a chipmunk song back down to its original speed. Where is the moment we needed the most? This technique wasn't new. For example, it was used in 1939 to give the munchkins of the Wizard of Oz their unique sound. Follow the yellow brick road. It was also used for cartoon characters like Tweety Bird. Pitch shifting wasn't only used for cartoons in Magical Kingdoms. Chuck Berry didn't want to sound like a chipmunk, but his record label did speed up his recording of Sweet Little Sixteen just a little bit so that he sounded younger. All over St. Louis, we're down in New Orleans. When creating the Beatles' Strawberry Fields Forever, John Lennon wanted to use parts of takes 7 and 26, but due to so much experimentation in the studio, the two parts were recorded at different tempos and in different keys. Producer George Martin slowed one take down so that the two matched. You can actually hear where the splice happens. Listen to the shift right before John Lennon says, going to. You might have noticed John Lennon's vocal take was slowed down, which is why it sounds dreamier, almost slurred. In more recent years, producers like Kanye and Just Blaze took note from Ross Bagdasarian and sped up soul and R&B samples adding a new Alvin and the Chipmunks kind of flavor to their beats. I spit it the wire, man. There's another way to affect pitch without adjusting the timing at all. Artists like Jimi Hendrix use guitar pedals to digitally affect the pitch in real time. In his song Purple Haze, he played the guitar through a pedal called the Octavia, which electronically doubles the frequency of the notes that are being played so that they sound an octave higher. <laughs> In more recent years, Jack White used a guitar pedal called the Digitech Whammy to do the exact opposite. Because the White Stripes lacked a bass guitarist, Jack White pitched down his guitar to sound like a bass in the song Seven Nation Army. Artists have also used pitch shifting to fix mistakes. 
Auto-tune was invented in 1997 to hide studio errors. Notes that were sung a bit off were no longer going to ruin a take. Producers were able to shift frequencies of notes to make everything sound perfectly in tune. But then, on October 19th, 1998, this happened. Auto-tune evolved from the audio version of Whiteout into an instrument itself. Cher didn't use it to cover up her mistakes. Instead, she used it as a vocal effect. Some purists still deride it as a crutch or a gimmick, while others like Radiohead, Lil Wayne, and T-Pain saw it as another tool to make something unique. When singer Casey Dianel claimed that Justin Bieber and Skrillex's song Sorry infringed on the copyright of her song Ring the Bell, Skrillex took to Twitter to show that he didn't steal the song but actually used pitch shifting to create the song's chorus in a way that made it a very close match. Now take this. Pitch it up 12 semitones. In recent years, there has been a wave of choruses that feature vocals with raised pitches and fragmented parts, with producers contorting the human voice into catchy but alien sounding hooks. Think Major Lazer's Lean On, or Skrillex, Diplo, and Bieber's Where Are You Now. What do you think? we can do with a pitch shift song. Maybe taking a sample of someone talking, mm. because that's, there are pitches if you really examine it. Yeah. What if every element of the song is pitch shifted in some way? I feel like it's gonna sound really trippy because yeah. like everything, every part of, like there's nothing familiar in there anymore because everything has been altered. Trippy is, is good in this instance. <laughs> yeah. Trippy is great. I hope, I hope it sounds trippy. I have a clip of Diana speaking right now. So let me play it. I'm Diana from Physics Girl and you're watching Soundfield. We should use her definition of pitch. We can start the track just to give the clips a context but then gradually pitch shift it. All right, so. Pitch is the frequency of the sound wave, which tells you how often your wave is moving back and forth. Your wave is moving back your and forth. Your wave is moving back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> back and forth, 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 back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. We have That's our track. <laughs> we have our track. Pitch is the frequency of the sound wave, which tells you how often your wave is moving back and forth. 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 Music is so mathematical. Sound field. As for Jay-Z and Nicki Minaj, well, Jay is the one that wrote Death of Auto-Tune to protest all this pitch shifting. But then again, if he's Nicki's ghost rapper, wouldn't that be the right move to throw us all off? I've been hearing the sound everywhere. We just wanted to give a shout out to That's Teo for taking the beat we did on our trap episode and remixing it and rapping over it. Check it out. I'ma have a milli when I'm 26 bet. And if I make a milli, give it to the kids. No cap, bucket list. Got my bucket overflow on tap. And if I'm getting hungry, chef a trap bar, rap snacks, bucket list. Got me on PBS too. And I'ma make it happen because the viewers like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.